we've got our prayer list and we always want to remember our children. We want to remember Brother Philip Tackett, Sister Judy Gerhardt. We want to remember Brother James that's here. He gets some, he's had a bone scan done and they, they've already found some cancer and they've done a bone scan. He gets those results Tuesday. Let's remember Brother Greg's son. Let's also remember Sister Geneva, his wife. Sister D has asked us to be praying for her and Paul up in almost uh, in Washington, D.C. Let's remember William Hamilton, Margaret Menix, Jeff Newsom. Let's remember Brother Ronnie's Uncle Charlie. Brother D Train is not here today. He's down towards Lexington. His his mom contacted him and she was supposed to meet him at the Lexington church this morning. I I sent him a little text saying, Brother D, I'm gonna be praying for you. That if God has ever blessed you, I hope he blesses him today. Let's remember Brother Chris Ingram. He's from over at the Turner Church. And his family, they've been battling COVID. Remember Roger and Frankie Mullins, Sister Hester, Sister Barb, and Billy Glenn. Squirrely, he's due to get a pacemaker next month. Let's remember Rita Blackburn. She's been in ICU. Any word on her? She's doing better. She's doing better. Yeah. Brother Joby's cousin, he's got a little boy, six years old, that's got cancer and it's not looking good for him. And uh, his name's Cooper Coleman. And Brother Joey's cousin asked us to please. Let's remember Brother Curtis Newsom. He's also been exposed and had some problems. Let's remember Brother Jimmy's family, Austin and Cooper. Boys. And remember Sister Sadie Justice. Let's remember Sister Courtney that's traveling. She's going to see her family. And let's remember Sister Keisha's boy, Matt. They had to take him to the emergency room last time. Let's remember all the, the people that are going in the wrong direction. We can't say anything, we know that. But I pray that God can intervene and put something in their way to get their attention. Cause them to realize that they need Him as their Savior. Let's remember our nation. We're definitely struggling. That's for sure. Every nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. And I'm telling you, seeing it. Yeah. So with these few, and I know there's many others, let's remember all the sick and afflicted, let's remember the nursing homes, let's remember the hospitals, let's remember every family that's struggling with the problems. Yeah. So Tony Joe Bryan has uh, been diagnosed with cancer. Remember me. Anybody else before we get started?
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. And whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Oh, Here's the part I like. He said, not his son in this world to condemn the world. That the world might be saved. That's right. As his brother saying, I want to leave this with you. If you don't know the Lord today, my prayer is you get him on your bond. Get concerned.
I serve a God that is able if he wanted to right now. But he's dealing with the same type of people that he dealt all through this book. A disobedient, a hard-hearted, a rebellious people. Stiff-necked. But you know, even though through all that, he still sent the most precious thing. He still sent his only son to this low ground sorrowful world to save a rich hot man. That's what his purpose was. To save this world from their sin. Yeah. And make a way back to that truth. Yeah. That's what we're striving for this morning. That's what we're looking for. That eastern sky is going to roll back one day. The Bible says when we say no. Oh, but I always stand ready to be looking. Because the hour that you think not, he'll come when he's coming. I'm going to get out of the way. I'm thankful that God has blessed me to be here. I'm going to get out of the way and hear these brothers. But just think about that. If you close your eyes and live tonight, we you regret the decisions that you made today. That's what I want to leave you in your heart this morning. Just think about that.
that I could add a little bit to it. Sat over in my seat just worried. Nervous, Brother Mike, not to not to stand up in front of a crowd anymore, Brother Mike, but worried. We don't write any sermon out for you this morning or have it all planned, but it's with hopefully much prayer and meditation. Brother, it's with trying to think of the words that maybe would make people understand just how much that you need the Lord in your life. I said it a few weeks back, and I'll say it again. I feel like we live in a world that is all the time saying that God, He understands me. God, He understands me. But I wish that the world would consider this one little thing. When they say that God understands them, I wonder if they understand God. I believe that we're asking the wrong question this morning. It's not God understanding he understands his people today. And he knows the brother, and he knows my heart and my desire better than I would know it myself. Brother, and he would know these intentions. But brother in the world always wants God to come on their side and wants them to be understand their ways instead of trying to understand just what is God's ways today. And brother, as I was sitting there, brother, and listening to the brother, and I just was thinking, um, brother, and how, how happy I was within my heart, brother, and see, uh, but one time after I began to read the scripture, uh, brother, I came across the scripture right here, uh, brother, and it puzzled me and said, uh, brother, Jesus, brother, I began to read uh, all the miracles he did, uh, brother, he would go to the blind, uh, brother, and he would spit upon
Brother, of blessings. How many times? Brother Mike, do we think that we're going to outgive God? It's like these brothers went over to, to visit you, and we think we're going to do a good deed. Brother Hank, we look at us. We'll drive an hour and a half. We'll go to church. And brother, we'll go with visit them brothers. Uh, brother Joe, how many times will you jump in them cars? We head to North Carolina. Brother, we're going to go do something good. Brother, we're going to go. Brother, and we get to the church house, brother, in the spirit. Begins to move, brother, and I leave so blessed. I think, oh, oh Lord, how much more do I owe you? Oh, brother, every time I think I'll go and I'll give a little bit to the Lord. Oh, my brother, he takes it, he fills my cup up. Oh, my brother, and he sends me on my way. Oh, my brother, fool as I can be. Oh, my brother, and that's why I'm a serving God is. And that's what this world is missing today. Brother, you're not going to outgive God, but when we don't give him anything, we just should change ourselves. Brother, we just, we just take our blessings and we cast them away. I said this just the other day, and I'll say it again. It's a few years back, or about five to seven years, maybe even a little longer, a bunch of the young people that used to have a youth group, they used to meet up here and they would have a little Bible study in Brother, about every Tuesday they meet and never really went to them, Brother Mike, and I decided I'll go one, one evening and I showed up and I just sat over here and I just kind of wanted to be quiet. I wanted to listen to them and what they did is at the end of each meeting, one weekend or one time, one of their meetings, they all took and they wrote down questions. Brother, did they put it in a little jar and at the end of each one, they pulled that question out and they discussed it. Brother, and it was the end of service, and I pulled that question out, and it said this question right here. It said, would you give away a blessing for a million dollars? Brother, and I began to let them all speak, and they all began to talk, and one stood up, and they said, I would never give away a blessing for a million dollars. I'm brother, and then one by one, it got about two or three down, and I, and I thought I said, I just want to pose this question. How many blessings could I give with the million dollars? Uh, and it piqued everyone's interest, and they all thought, well, yeah, we could do good. Uh, I'm brother, and then begin to debate these things. Uh, oh, what am I just saying? I just listen, brother, my. Uh, and finally, five or ten minutes later, uh, they said, brother, my, uh, can you tell us what you see? Uh, and I said, uh, I stood up and I said, uh, I said, you guys have really answered very well. Uh, I said what this is. Uh, I said, let me put it in real life for you. Uh, I said, you made uh, uh, this great big number of a million dollars. Uh, I said, what if I told you uh, uh, men and women uh, are selling blessings uh, for one dollar? Uh, what if I told you uh, uh, they're selling blessings uh, uh, to sleeping on Sunday? Uh, what if I told you uh, uh, they're selling blessings uh, uh, to keep that five dollars? Uh, at the grocery store line uh, that they knew they were uh, uh, that they knew uh, uh, they were uh, uh, giving that they were shortchanged uh, and they kept it anyways uh, I said uh, I'm brother in this world uh, I wish it understood uh, they're giving away uh, God for nothing yeah. they're giving away blessings for nothing today. brother they're not getting their million dollars but they get it for an extra half hour sleep they get it for an extra five dollars in that line that they knew was a curse. Yep. But they said, oh well, it's my lucky day. Yep. <laughs> I ain't saying that will send you straight on. But I'm saying it's all about serving God. It's all about doing the right things. I remember, I remember just after I was preaching, maybe two years, I owned a little lawn care service. I used to get my friends to come and help me. And brother, we used to have to go around. It was low-income housing down towards the city. And brother, we used to have to look and see if the lawns were, were good enough to cut if they had grown enough. Brother, and I had a buddy of mine who wasn't in the church, one I, I ran the streets with. Brother, and we came upon, and we came up to this lawn, and I said, that one isn't even worth cutting. It hasn't grown at all. He said, yeah, but if you just write it in that little book, he said, they'll pay you. This, the state will pay you for that. 
many thoughts have been going through my mind, it being the last Christmas, uh, the last Sunday before Christmas. Everybody's been scrambling. Everybody's been worried, Brother Canary, about what we ought to get one another. Everybody's troubled, it seems like, during this season. Society says that, that there's more suicides this time of year than any other. And this, this ought to be a, a good time. But yet, for some reason, we, we feel stressed out. Jesus came along and he said, My peace I give unto you, not as the world. Isaiah the prophet began to write a long time ago, prophesying of this man. He said, Unto you is born a child. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Concerning his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, he shall order it and establish it. If the Lord brought peace into this world, then why are many women struggling today? More so than ever in the history of time, it seems. Even I heard, uh, uh, I was listening to a, a broadcast of a very famous doctor. And they asked him, they said, what do you think the problem with our society is right now? And he said, it's simple. Many women have no hope. And that's very true. Because if we pin our hopes in this world, we're of all men. And I want you to know that there is a hope for many women today. If they would only turn to this man called Jesus, they would only begin to seek him out, brother, and I promise you uh, that they'll find him. I'm running with son, I know that I was a young man, 19 years old. I began to seek the Lord out, brother. I should have had the world by the tail, brother Larry. Had a good job, brother Honey had a good family. I was healthy, I just graduated I'm up from high school, brother. I, I should have been on top of the world, but I want you to know that how something began, how to work down inside of me, brother, and, I, and turn me down. I'm really great with son. I'm telling me how there was a better way. How in the world how could there be a better way? I'm in heaven. Everything that I needed, I thought. According to the world's standards, uh, uh, but you know what? Uh, I was missing something. Uh, uh, listen to me. Uh, I was missing something. Uh, I'm down uh, uh, deep in my soul, brother. Uh, uh, listen. Uh, and and his name uh, I was called Jesus. Uh, and you know what? These brothers uh, have already uh, I've been talking about uh, how what Jesus was. Uh, how John summed it up. Uh, and he said, Herein uh, is love. Uh, not that we love God, uh, but rather God loved us. Uh, I mean, brother, uh, I'm glad that uh, I'll listen for you. Somebody come my way, brother, and show me how uh, that I've gone the wrong way, brother. Uh, somebody come my way uh, and said, uh, 
how the direction you're going I feel wrong, brother. And I, I wish that I was a stubborn young man. I, I was a prideful, a, a young man. I, I love darkness. I, I rather than the condition that it's in. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, the struggling in this world, brother Mike. Uh, uh, there's sorrow. Uh, uh, there's problem. And somebody might say, well, uh, uh, he's a gloom and doom preacher. Uh, I got news for you. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I'm a glory uh, uh, bound preacher. I'm glad that uh, uh, but I'm telling you this today. Uh, if you don't have the Lord in your heart, uh, how that it is going to do, brother. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but I'm telling you, uh, oh, uh, if I could give uh, of the world anything, uh, I'd just want to point up to Jesus. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I'm telling you one thing, uh, I'll point you to Jesus. Uh, I was with my little grandchildren yesterday. How uh, uh, we been, how uh, we were driving along, Brother Joe, we began to play games. Uh, uh, listen, uh, and my little grandson began to ask me, uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, what would you change uh, if you could do anything to change? Uh, and I said, well, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, little uh, nine-year-old, I guess he is now. Uh, uh, but I asked him, I said, well, uh, if you could be anybody in the world, who would you be? Uh, uh, he began to rattle off. Uh, uh, listen, different one, brethren. And they said, what about you, Paul? Uh, uh, oh, nothing but troubles and sorrows. Uh, I've got to disagree with you. I felt that way one time. Uh, uh, oh, but uh, when this man found me uh, uh, in a way found me over uh, he got me up off my knees, brother, and, uh, and he set me on a uh, uh, path for heaven, brother, I should uh, uh, go under David to get the right Uh, 
I'll tell you what it's all about. In 1914, how World War One broke up. I began to come, and brother, listen. There was 25 million soldiers lost in that battle, brother, in that great war of four years. I'll let you know what on Christmas Day in 1914, how the war hadn't been going on very long. How the Germans was down in one trench, and brother the Brits and the Scots were over in another trench. How you go look this up? Oh, Lord, how they've been down in the wet trenches. How they've been freezing. How the ground was frozen. And brother, listen. And you know what? How they've been killing one another. And then on Christmas Eve, how about 8 o'clock in the evening, how all the rifling stopped, how all the artillery stopped, and there was silence, and over in the tournament, and they started a little song, called Silent Night, a holy night. And when the Brits and the Scots heard it sung, they started singing their own carol, and nobody was fighting anymore. Right after midnight, brother, listen, somebody yelled over across the little valley and said, Merry Christmas, listen, and the other side, they responded. And they yelled back, if you don't believe this, their story is written in letters from some of them 19-year-old boys, back their mom and dad, and it's held in the Smithsonian Institute, oh, but all night long, they were singing, they were hollering back and forth, when the sun finally rose in the morning, uh, you know what? Uh, one of the soldiers uh, stepped up out of the trench uh, and he had uh, all kinds of gifts. Uh, he was taking them to the other side. Uh, somebody on the other side climbed out uh, and he had things uh, right in his hand. Uh, and brother, they come across and they met on uh, right in the middle part. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, they begin to shake hands uh, and and brother, listen, uh, everybody come together uh, on Christmas Day. Uh, uh, oh, Lord, uh, somebody uh, uh, even brought out a little football. Uh, it was a soccer ball. Uh, and brother, uh, uh, they said, uh, and neither side said, uh, they even knew where that ball came from. Uh, uh, nobody had a ball there. Uh, uh, but somehow a uh, uh, soccer ball came uh, and they began to play soccer all day long. Uh, uh, oh, on Christmas uh, evening, uh, uh, the sun was sinking low. Uh, uh, both sides uh, uh, started to go back and get in their trenches. Uh, and one of those men said, uh, uh, listen, uh, I guess now uh, uh, we'll go back to our side uh, and we'll fight for our country uh, and I guess you'll go uh, uh, back to your side uh, and fight for your country uh, and he said uh, God bless you uh, I hope you're the best uh, uh, oh Sir. 
orders. Uh, and those commanders said, I never again will you stop fighting. Uh, uh, brother, in, uh, and the next three years on Christmas, uh, uh, they were still fighting, brother Mike. Uh, I'm glad uh, uh, that I've got a king. Uh, I've got a leader.
got something on his heart, we can let you come. You know, God is so good to us. He really, really is. You know, this is the way the world is. I'll tell this, and we'll bring the service to a close. And, and, I, and I'm very serious about this. There was a man in Hollywood back in the 1960s, a very famous man, and a man that, that had, he was a cartoonist, Charles Schultz. You know, he was a cartoonist, and he, he always drew the Snoopy uh, and, and the Charlie Brown characters. And every every year they they'd always have his great pumpkin, and they they have all these different ones that he had been he had already released. But he went he went and sat down with some of the Hollywood moguls. You can read this too. This is a true story uh, that he went and sat down with some of the big producers uh, uh, in that uh, that time, and he said, "I want to do a Christmas story." And they said, "Wonderful, and that'll be awesome uh, for you to do that about Santa Claus." And he he looked right at me and he said, "Well, I actually want to tell the true story and the true meaning of Christmas." Uh, and they looked at him and they said, "You can't do that. Uh, nobody would watch it." Uh, uh, nobody would want to even listen to it. Uh, and he kept telling them, I want to do it my way uh, or else I'm not going to do it. Uh, and they finally gave in to him. Uh, and, and everybody probably here has seen uh, uh, the, the little uh, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas uh, where that, uh, all the kids were gathered around uh, and they said, we need us a Christmas tree. Uh, and they said, Charlie Brown, this is just a little, a little cartoon, but the there's a meaning in it uh, that everybody needs to catch. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, they, uh, they sent Charlie Brown to get a little Christmas tree. Uh, uh, they gave him some money, uh, and he went to a Christmas tree lot. Uh, and and uh, one boy said, this is a big, pretty one. Uh, this is an awful big, uh, pretty tree. Uh, and Charlie Brown seen a little one uh, uh, that was just, uh, just a little bit. And it's, uh, uh, it's needles were falling. Uh, and Charlie Brown, uh, I believe there was compassion uh, what they were trying to get across. Uh, he seen a little one in the bag, uh, and he said, I'll take that one right there. He brought it back to the children uh, uh, there in that little gymnasium. Uh, and they, of course, they looked at it. Uh, uh, the first ornament they put on it, I uh, uh, bent that little tree all the way over. Uh, and and they called Charlie Brown a blockhead. Uh, like they always did. Uh, uh, Brother Listen uh, um, and Charlie Brown, uh, he began to wonder and he said, uh, uh, what is Christmas all about? Uh, and it was the famous words uh, uh, of the lioness that carried his little security blanket. Uh, he climbed up on stage uh, and he got real quiet uh, uh, in that gym uh, and he said, and he began to read. Uh, he actually quoted the uh, the second chapter of the book of Luke uh, uh, from verse 8 uh, and many verses after that he said uh, uh, there were in the same country shepherds uh, abiding in the field uh, keeping watch over their flock by night uh, and lo the angel of the Lord uh, uh, listened uh, came uh, upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round and about them uh, and they were all and the angel said, Fear not, uh, for behold, uh, I bring you good tidings uh, of great joy uh, unto all the people. Uh, listen, he said, uh, For unto you is born uh, in uh, this day in the city of David a Savior, uh, which is Christ the Lord. Uh, and this shall be a sign unto you. You'll find the babe uh, wrapped in swaddling uh, clothes lying in a manger and suddenly uh, uh, there was with the angel a multitude uh, of the heavenly host praising God uh, and saying glory to God uh, in the highest and on earth uh, of peace and goodwill towards men uh, what more do you want uh, how they have peace in this world uh, if you want peace uh, it's only going to be found in Jesus uh, 